You can take an entire course including topics in this video through our website and get a certificate of completion from RASAF, the online educational radio frequency institute located in Irwan, California. Instructions and coupon for taking this course is provided at the end of this video. In this section, we are going to talk about noise. So what is noise? We say noise is random. We can show noise as a voltage or current. So noise is not something like different. It's actually kind of a voltage, which is changing all the time. So I'm going to show here. It's very simple. Imagine that we have a voltage and this voltage is constant. So it has a value. We call this value V1. So this is the difference between the normal DC voltage or maybe a voltage which is um, changing all the time. For example, a sine wave here. This voltage is changing. But as you see, the voltage has a specific amplitude. The amplitude is not changing here. And it's a, it's a always constant. The amplitude here is, for example, A. So what about the noise? Noise is exactly like a voltage, or it can be a current, but this time, the amplitude is changing and it's kind of random and we can't expect it. So noise is something like this, as you see. So basically noise is nothing but just the voltage, but it's changing and we say it extends in various forms across the frequency spectrum, although not always in same amplitude. And also actually the amplitude is always changing and it doesn't follow any uh, pattern. So we have different kind of noises, we're going to talk about them. So we have white noise, pink noise, and band-limited noise. White noise is type of noise that affects all frequencies equally. It means that the amplitude of noise is kind of constant for all frequencies. It's same for 1 GHz, it's same for 2 GHz, so amplitude is not changing with frequency. But what about the pink noise? Pink noise is different. Pink noise does not have a flat response, so it's not like white noise. The power density falls with increasing frequency. So when we increase our frequency, when we are going from 1 GHz to 2 GHz or 10 GHz, the power of this noise, the power density of noise falls. Band limited noise. Noise can have its frequency band limited, either by filters or the circuit through which it passes. We are going to explain in upcoming slide. So let's see uh, the white noise. This is kind of noise as we explained. As you see, the amplitude of noise is changing and it's kind of random here it increases decreases so it's, it's, it does not follow a specific pattern and frequency is also changing it doesn't have a, a single frequency it has lots of frequency components inside it so it's kind of a voltage which is changing all the time and it has a uh, actually low amplitude it's not very high it depends and as you see this is a white noise here so the amplitude of noise, or we can say the power of this noise, is constant all the time. It's changing a bit, but it's around 6, as you see here. And it's constant for different kind of frequencies. This is normalized frequency. Norm this is normalized frequency. So the, the amplitude is not changing with uh, frequency. It's always constant. What about the pink noise? As you see here, this is the pink noise. So the power is decreasing when we increase our frequency. And this is the band limited noise. As you see, we only have noise for this band. So it means that it's, that's why we call it band limited. It means we don't have noise uh, out of this band. So this is uh, this is no noise here, and this place as well. For example, it can be a bandpass filter. It's very simple. So this is a bandpass filter, and uh, we have a noise, so when we, so this is a filter, imagine that this is a bandpass filter. And when our noise goes inside this bandpass filter, the components, the only components will be picked, which are inside this band, that's why. So the, the noise will be attenuated outside of the band. So if, if the noise has frequency components outside of this band, they will all be attenuated. That's why we call this band limited noise. So, effect of the noise. We talked about the noise and here we want to see why we always avoid noise and why we want to minimize it. We say the variations in amplitude caused by noise can mask out a signal or it can cause data errors, increasing the bit error rate. This is very important. We are going to explain this. So, the for the best performance, 
obviously the signal should be as clear as the noise as possible so we have to minimize the noise and in many instances in many cases there is an acceptable level of data or signal to noise ratio against the cost involved so for example for an application we can say that we accept noise but up to this level and um, we can if if our noise is increased more than this is not acceptable so we say the acceptable level and we show it with uh, signal to noise ratio and we are going to explain this actually you don't have to worry about so let's see what is happening so imagine that we have the we have a kind of data here so this is our data and we don't have any noise and we are getting data completely okay we don't have any problem here so let's see what is happening if we have noise uh, in our system so we have to add the signal with the noise here so this is the noise signal this is our signal and this is the noise so imagine that we have a system here this is system and uh, this is our signal inside it and our system is a noisy system so it has noise and uh, so the data will then this noise will be combined with our signal and what will we have at the output is something like this maybe uh, so as you see it's kind of destroying the shape of our signal for example let's say I'm going to show it in a better shape let's say this is my signal and uh, I am supposed to get the uh, data for example let's say this is my my T point the date the time I am supposed to get the data of for example the amplitude of a in at this point I'm going to show with another color let's see now what is the effect of the noise so now we have a noise so in the data will be something like that so at this point it will be like this and so on so as you see because of the noise instead of getting a here I will get this kind of data and it's a plus for example e and this is the data error so it depends on in my system if my system is really sensitive it means that I'm basically getting the wrong data so this one is wrong data that's why uh, we are always afraid of noise. We, have, we want to minimize this noise. We want to get rid of this. And it, it will always cause problem for us. So in this picture, we can uh, see the previous discussion. This is a signal which is mis mixed with noise. And we have the noisy signal, as you see. And this is a very good example. As you see, that this is the blue, the blue line showing our signal. But when, it, uh, when it's mixed with the noise, we have the orange one. As you see, it's uh, distorted. The shape is distorted and it will cause problem. For example, here I assume that I will get a data which is equal to the amplitude A at this point, but because of the noise, I'm getting this data. So I, I have a uh, error here, data error here. So we're going to talk about the different types of noise. We start with the thermal noise. Uh, the thermal noise is the agitation of charge carriers. It's very simple. Imagine that the electrons are moving and the, 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 the electrons are charge carriers so uh, what happens if we increase temperature the thing happens is the electrons uh, they start moving faster and faster and they collide with each other and they will produce noise so this is very simple this is the re reason we have a uh, noise for example now we are trying to uh, make a current here so he here we have elect we have charge carriers and uh, we want to make a current so we, we connect this to the voltage and these uh, carriers are there these carriers starts going to this side and we know the you know the direction of current is opposite of that here so these are going to the left but what happens if they start like uh, moving randomly here it will cause uh, noise in our current for example we we assume that our current is a constant but because of this random movements between the carriers the current will be something like this it won't be precise and it won't be constant so that's the problem of thermal noise what about the shot noise uh, shot noise is uh, coming from the uh, the actually nature the, the the strict nature of electro electric charge it's, it doesn't depend on temperature so if we um, it's, it doesn't have any relationship between temperature it's just because it's a kind of a fluctuations in the current generally it depends it's uh, related to current and uh, it's basically 
the movement of electric and ele electrons or and the uh, charge carriers. We are not going to talk about this in detail because it's not really uh, our case of interest. Generally, the thermal noise is really important. The phase noise also. We have a phase noise, as you see, um, you can see, you can understand from its name. It means that our phase is changing. This time, our phase has kind of fluctuations. So uh, I can show with this picture, as you see, the phase here, the phase of our signal is changing all the time because of the noise and this will cause us a jitter and we can explain jitter something uh, like that for example this is our clock or this is our signal okay and we we assume that we are we are our data is getting from high to low value at this time the time t1 but because of the phase noise we will have jitter and it will cause something like this for example if i have a delay so it will happens here instead of this point so now at the moment of t, at the time of t1, our data is still high and it will cause us problems. So this is one of the problems that uh, phase noise causes. So another one is a flicker noise. It uh, actually appears in low frequencies. We call it 1 over f. It's a proportional to inverse of the frequency. And it can show up as a variety of effects, but often occurs as a resistance fluctuations. We are not going to explain the nature and where it is coming from because... Uh, it's not topic of our interest, but we can show with this uh, figure as you see. So here, in high frequencies, we, uh, the dominant noise is the thermal and shot noise, as you see here. But as we decrease the frequency, we say the flicker, flicker noise is uh, proportional to inverse of frequency. So it means that if we decrease our frequency, we will have high flicker noise. As you see here, it's, uh, it's increasing. And this is a corner frequency. This is the actually the point which separates the flicker noise and thermal noise, shot noise. And also when we say that we have high flicker noise and it's a dominant here, it doesn't mean that we don't have thermal noise here. Thermal noise is kind of constant for all uh, frequencies, but the flicker noise here is high. And when we compare flicker noise to thermal and shot noise, we say, this is dominant and we, we just carry uh, this one because it's, it's a really high value. And the last one is avalanche noise. Uh, is a form of noise that occurs in the PN junctions that are operated in a region at or close to the point of avalanche breakdown, which is not our topic of interest. I just wanted to mention, you know, the breakdown voltage when we increase the inverse voltage in PN junction, is uh, when we get uh, close to that breakdown voltage, uh, it will cause a noise. And uh, we are not going to talk about this in details for now. Hey guys, thank you for watching the entire video. I'm going to provide you with a coupon for taking our fundamental basic concepts and components, RA RF101. So you can uh, get this course from our website. If you go to the page, you just have to select the buy this course and register here. As you see, if you're not registered up to now. So you need your username, email, password and also you have to answer a security question and then you can uh, press the uh, register button uh, press the sign up button and uh, you will be able to uh, register in our website and after that all you need to uh, do is going to the, the course landing page and uh, go to check out and as you see click to enter your code you can put the the coupon code here and then apply the coupon so then you will have this course for free and you can uh, take this course as you see you won't pay anything for this course Rasoft has one of the most complete online certificate in radio frequency available which covers practical topics needed to be a knowledgeable RF engineer since all courses are consulted closely by design engineers and pioneers whom have worked as RF engineers in top RF companies such as Qualcomm, Broadcom, Skyworks, Intel and Apple as well as avionic companies it covers the necessary information to land a job or successful in your career. Your first step to take the prerequisite course, RAH RF101, which we have provided the free coupon for it, RFPREREQ101. See you there shortly.